as promised. Uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about the shoujo style, uh, which is what this is in. The tale of Genji, you know, it's a saucy and spicy tale about, you know, rich people being fabulous and uh, doing all that kind of stuff that rich fabulous do, which is, you know, get into relationships, have messy relationships, and then uh, find probably messy ways to solve the problems. Uh, but it is, you know, people doing, um, you know, romantic, uh, romance and intrigue, we'll call it, which I would say is kind of the foundations of the early forms of uh, shoujo manga, which is what I was kind of going to talk about a little bit. Uh, I don't know too much about it, to be honest, because I didn't, <laughs> you know, I will need more of the Fighty McFight stuff right over there. Uh, though I do know that uh, one other manga we have in our store that I encourage you to come and check out and hopefully pick up for yourself is The Tale of Versailles, I should say. Is that what I said? Yep. The Rose, sorry. Womp womp. The Rose of Versailles is what this is, not the Tale of Versailles. Tale of Genji is a, this other thing that I'm trying to show off because uh, I think it's a pretty book. And it's, you know, it, it's an important literary artifact in its original form. And, you know, consuming it in its manga form is, uh, I think, a preferable method to becoming a PhD or grad student of medieval Japanese. So that's why we're doing the Tale of Genji stories right now. So Rose of Versailles is considered probably one of the most well-known of the early foundational, I guess we'll call it, stories in uh, shoujo genre. And this is a story, if we well, look at the back there, wiggle, 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 wiggle. But it's talking about 1770 Austria. Um, so this is a story that focuses on like the characters uh, and the drama that ensues within the upper crusts of Austrian society. And uh, of course, it wouldn't be shoujo, you know, it's one of the defining elements, you know, them shiny, shiny eyes, and as I sometimes call it, the pika pika shine time. And the other element to the people that I at least uh, associate the most with um, shoujo beyond like the fabulous hair is, where is it? I need to find it, and it's not showing up. Uh, the cover of the Tale of Genji is a good example, but I wanted, I was hoping they'd have this, uh, maybe I missed it in the beginning. Um, there are these character introductions that happen a lot of times in shoujo that are, I think they're ridiculous and hilarious. Um, but people that are into this um, type of thing, they probably don't consider it to be hilarious. But I don't know. I, I think it's because of the fact that it's like this, this thing that they do when they introduce a new character where they just kind of like, oh, this is a story that's like, you know, we're having a story and then all of a sudden, you know, let's introduce the count of whatever. And then they do like a step away, kind of let's separate ourselves from reality. And maybe it's like from the eyes of the main character, maybe is what it's meant to be. Uh, but yeah, it's usually like introducing Genji. He just entered the room and then all of a sudden flowers from nowhere show up to, you know, do this kind of, you know, portrait picture 
you know and a lot of times if you're, if you're watching an anime you know it's all out of nowhere he'll just like strike pose look at the camera and then all that extra you know flare shows up out of nowhere for you know a couple seconds or whatever and then it's gone and we go back to like reality as it were uh, and that's one of the things I've always kind of been amused by uh, to, no ex to no great extent or to some great extent. Whatever. Point is, it's one of the things that I, I, I always value when I have a moment to read through or attempt to read, I should say, because again, uh, since I read more Fighting McFight stuff, Fighting McFighters don't do as much talking and, you know, emotional exploration. So I, my vocabulary related to that in Japanese is pretty uh, lacking, to be nice about it. Uh, yeah, Pillar of Versailles. Rose of, the Rose of Versailles, oh my god. I'm gonna keep doing that, I think, for a long time after talking about the Tale of Genji. So, the Rose of Versailles, we got in the store. We actually have all of them. Uh, there's however many issues there are for the entire story. We do have them. I encourage you to come and get it. And uh, the last thing I'm gonna plug here real quick is the Tale of Genji, I mentioned earlier, is set in medieval Japan, which is like a thousand years. Yeah, a thousand years, you know, 2023, 20, cut that in half to a thousand. That's about Heian period. Uh, this is the diary of an, op an apothecary, um, which we have the whole set or up to whatever the current, you know, edition is or issue. If it's not already finished, I'm not sure yet. But Kusuriya no Hitori Goto would be the name in Japanese of this um, story. And it is covering a, basically a druggist um, who is operating in the Heian period in Japan. Uh, and it's, again, it's part of the sojo genre. So it is going to be, you know, more of a kind of drama oriented, more interpersonal, uh, and it's a druggist thing, so you know probably, you know most of this, a lot of the story will involve people that come down with some kind of sick sickness that need, you know, a remedy, uh, and then the drama that ensues, like who, is it a poisoning or is it really a sickness, and some other things like that will be, you know, involved in this particular story. Uh, but if you're someone who's, you know, interested in medieval Japan. I would recommend that as well. Uh, I'm not sure about its accuracy when it comes to some of the historical elements of it, but again, uh, when it comes to the visual elements of it, they're all gonna be there. And uh, again, yeah, something to think about. We got Taylor Genji, which uh, to be honest, uh, I recommend for a very variety of reasons, and yeah, I think I already listed a lot of them. But the more I think about it, the more I, you know, really think everybody should read it when it comes down to uh, manga uh, and the story arcs and the things that you find in a lot of the drama that comes out that is in uh, what you enjoy in pop culture, Japanese storytelling because a lot of them you could probably find a chapter within the tale of genji that covers it in like a brief version someone else decided got inspired by and extended it you know so yeah it gets into some shenanigans like basically anything that you can think of when it comes to shenanigans that boys can get into So, and it's considered classical literature.
Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to come to the store that's in Waikiki. We're open from Tuesdays to Sundays, 10 to 5. If you can't make it into the store, don't forget to check out our website where we have everyday updates on what's expected to come in and what we actually have on, on, in stock. Uh, you can also order online.